Greetings, audiophiles and Mass Effect fans. Welcome to my reading of of my fanfiction, After the Fall. This is a Mass Effect fanfiction, and as such, most of the characters and the universe belong to Bioware slash EA Games. No copyright infringement is intended. However, the scenario and occurrences within this fanfiction are my intellectual property, so if you decide you want to share this with someone, credit me. Please. Part 25. Invictus. Shepard sensed her people moving around her once again, as if to enclose her. Rex and Grunt strode over to stand like massive guard dogs before Shepard. She could sense Garrus at her shoulder, Javik at the other. She knew Kirahi and Liara lingered back with the injured Talion Caden. Though Shepard could feel the static prickle on her skin of Liara's biotics at the ready. She glanced sideways towards Malik, who dipped his head to her, his single eye glowing iridescently. Stand down, she said to her people, her voice low. Grunt and Rex unwillingly moved aside to allow her passage. She had feared she might get flashbacks, a panic attack or two. Instead, she only felt an empowering rage. The tiger had found the hunter, and this wasn't going to end well for him. So she said, her tone almost casual. We have reached the true end of things. You won't be lying to me or fooling me this time. Won't I? The child asked, a smile playing on his translucent blue lips. This time I brought my friends with me, and this time I have not recently suffered head trauma. So this is it? Javik spoke, his voice a growl, his lip curled in contempt, revealing sharp teeth. This little hologram is responsible for the murder of countless species? They are not countless, the V.I. smirked. I have counted every one. The number would baffle your tiny brains. You will soon be one of them. Your pitiful cycle. It seems like you missed a Prothean or two. Shepard folded her arms, not defensively, but conversationally. She tried not to look at Malik who had moved to stand behind the child. A small control orb had appeared between his hands, and he was busily manipulating it. She knew she had to keep the VI distracted. I miss nothing, the child said, its echoing voice growing louder. You missed a lot of things, Shepard corrected in her best condescending tone. She really could sound like an asshole when she wanted to. You didn't notice that this cycle was different, that in this cycle, we are all allies against you. The V.I. smirked. This has happened in many cycles before. Species have allied to try to defeat us, and they have all failed. Thousands of times they have failed. There's a first time for everything, Shepard pressed, not letting the cocky grin fade from her face. You did surprise us, Shepard. We did not expect the lesser species to evolve as you did, to grow immune to our indoctrination. It won't be enough, however. The child's eyes moved to look over her shoulder and went as cold as steel. Suddenly there was a yelp from behind her, and Shepard turned. Liara, Vega, and Rex were clutching their heads. Caden, though still out cold, twitched and winced. Fresh blood ran from his nose. Stop it! Shepard shouted, turning back to the child. Everyone who was able aimed their firearms at the V.I., who only blinked his child's eyes passively. I am also aware of your ship. I'm sending my watchdog to deal with it. The child looked up, and Shepard could not help but follow its gaze. Above them, in a starry sky, she could see Harbinger begin to move, slowly at first, then picking up speed towards the Normandy. Shepard's hand flew to her helmet. Joker, you have incoming. I see it, Joker's voice came back, tense but unwavering. Normandy can outmaneuver that son of a bitch. You take as long as you need. Stay safe. Shepard turned her attention back to her people. Grunt was supporting Rex, who snarled with pain and rage. Liara slumped on the verge of passing out, and Vega had fallen hard to his knees. Caden groaned. Kirahi squatted over the injured, running his Omni-Tool across them. This doesn't look good, Commander, he said, meeting her eyes. His large ones were filled with fear and dismay. 
This isn't a medical omni-tool, but I've made some modifications to it in my free time. From what I can tell, the VI is using something like accelerated indoctrination to attack their brains. The VI chuckled. You see, Commander? The trouble with having friends is that I can hurt them. The Invincible Shepherd has one very large weakness. Garrus stepped forward, slicing through the image of the little boy with the blade at the end of his rifle. It did no good. Where's the source of this projection? He growled, teeth bared. I say we shoot the shit out of it. No good. Kirihi shook his head, his speech almost as rapid fire as Morden's had been. The Citadel is the peacekeeper. It's been fully integrated into every system after thousands of years. Are you willing to let your people die while your Geth tries to hack me? The peacekeeper questioned, startling Shepard back to attention. Your alliance is nothing. It does not matter how many people you bring. They are inferior to us. They are ants, which would challenge a thresher maw. Would you not rather be superior, like the mighty creature you see before you? It gestured upwards to where Normandy was dodging the beam weapon of the horrifying Harbinger. You claim to be the next step in evolution. Then why are humans and other species evolving their own ways to counter your attacks? Shepard asked, fishing desperately for any form of ammunition. She saw Liara slump to the ground with a whimper. Now Shepard felt flashbacks threatening. Morden engulfed in fire and dying alone. Thane being stabbed again and again. Ashley, her back leaned against the bomb, fighting off enemy forces until the end. Jack and Samara holding the line and being ripped apart by a reaper beam. Shepard could feel her own legs turn to jello. It was all she could do to keep standing. Her breaths were shallow and jerking as her head swam with images of the people she had failed to save. Your species is flawed. Its attempts to protect you from us only prolong your suffering. Caden's life signs are failing, Kirihi said urgently. Shepard felt blood run into her mouth. She had been chewing her lips in her panic. What could she do? Then Garrus walked up to her and put his hand on her shoulder. Javik placed his hand on her other shoulder. The Prothean spoke, his voice a low rumble of strength. I believe you have given yourself away, Peacekeeper. You mentioned that you are aware of our synthetic attempting to hack your system, yet you do not destroy him. Instead, you attack us in an attempt to cause us to flee. In reality, the Geth is succeeding in his task. Soon, you will be disabled. Shepard could feel herself climbing back from a dark pit of memories. The voices of her friends pulled her back. To her surprise, it was Tally who spoke next. The Quarian was sitting up, hand clamped to the wound in her side, but eyes blazing behind her helmet. You have existed for so many cycles. Once, long ago, you malfunctioned. You were never meant to keep the peace this way. Wouldn't it be nice to rest now? Give the job to someone else. No! The VI's voice had changed, becoming deeper and louder, almost like a reaper itself. Caden, Vega, and Liara screamed, then fell silent. Rex, who had been holding his own, crumpled. You will not defeat me. I am the peacekeeper. You are all fools, insects. You are nothing to me, to my mission. Shepard turned and hurried to Caden's side. Crouching, she squeezed his shoulder, still staring down the enraged VI. Your mission is over. Her voice was so hushed her friends barely heard it. Garrus moved to hold Liara while Grun supported Rex, and Kirihi moved to check Vega's prone form. Javik remained, staring down the VI. Shepard looked at Malik, whose hands worked busily over the control orb between them. She hadn't known the Geth could work so fast. Still, she knew he needed more time. Just a little more time. But would she be able to give that to him without sacrificing her friends? Sweat prickled her skin, and she felt a heat like a righteous fire blaze up in her. No. She exhaled like a dragon breathing flame. Not. One. More. You have cost me so many of my beloved friends. You cost me a father. You cost me brothers and sisters. No more. Not a single one. The force of her words appeared to surprise the VI. It seemed to blink several times. She felt as though something invisible was reaching out for her. 
like the blackness of indoctrination that had clawed at the edges of her mind when she had faced the elusive man for the final time. Only now it was like a fire coming from her and pushing back the darkness, forcing the VI's power away from her friends. She didn't know what it was. Some form of long dormant biotics, a result of her immunity to indoctrination. She didn't care. She only needed the right words, and she could save her people. Then Ashley appeared in her mind, not waiting to die in a pool of reddening water, but smiling, whole and hale. Her face was gentle. She seemed to whisper the words to Shepard, who spoke them aloud with the force of a military officer. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced or cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Commander, we can't keep this up. Joker's voice came over the comm. At the same moment, Malik closed the control orb in his hands. He turned his bright eye to Shepard. When he spoke, it was with his own voice and the mouth of the VI child, who now stared blankly straight ahead. I have assumed direct control. Malik? Shepard tested uneasily. Commander, I don't know how you did it, but Harbinger just turned around. I've got a clean shot at its belly, and it's not doing shit about it, Joker reported jubilantly. Take the shot, Shepard said, her voice a hoarse whisper. Joker heard her, and moments later, the group was treated to a fireworks display as the Normandy blasted the hell out of the defenseless Reaper. Shepard turned back to Malik, who stood beside the VI child. He spoke again in both voices. We have taken over the run systems of the VI. We now have control of the Reapers and have begun guiding them to Earth's sun. Once the Reapers are destroyed, we will shut down the Peacekeeper. Understand that this will cause the Keepers in the Citadel to die as well. Their original minds are long since replaced with synthetic ones which are too corrupted even for us to save. Shepard hesitated, then asked the question which had always plagued her. What were they? The Keepers, I mean. Their species was one of the first. At the very beginning, when the VI Peacekeeper first became corrupted with the flawed hypothesis that synthetic will always fight organic, the Leviathan race was not the only one alive in that cycle. Many others existed, but only one proved genetically malleable enough to become permanent slaves. They were once called the Vorak, a passive, gentle people with very long lifespans, perfect for the Reaper's intentions. Eventually, the Vorak no longer truly existed. What we know as the Keepers are mere husks of the people that they once were. Commander, I'm as curious as you are, Kira he spoke up, but your people need medical attention. Right, Shepard said, shaking her head free of a thousand competing questions. Wait, Malik said, his head jerking awkwardly. The VI is fighting me. It has surrendered control of all the Reapers to focus its powers here. It intends to destroy the station. Fucker doesn't know when to quit, Garrus snarled. He knelt and scooped Tally into his arms. Grunt threw the arm of the groggy Rex over his broad shoulder. Come on, old man. Your people need you alive. Can we get back the way we came? Shepard went to the hole in the floor, where their elevator should have been. It was quite a drop. She could still see keepers moving below. Doesn't look like it, she answered her own question. Malik, when I give the word, deactivate the force field around this room. Shepard Commander? The Geth questioned. Just let me know when the Reapers have reached the sun, then bring the field down. We're getting the fuck out of here. She hit the side of her helmet again. Joker, I'm going to need a pickup, something fierce in a few minutes. Right, the pilot answered. Which docking port should I come to? No docking. You're going to have to snatch us from space. Are you kidding me? Jeff, it's our one chance. If anyone can pull this off, it's you. 
Best damn pilot in the galaxy. There was a pause. Then... Damn it, how do I let you get me with lines like that? All right, Shepard, your pickup is ready and waiting. The Reapers have reached the sun, and the VI is still struggling against my control. It will succeed in approximately ten minutes. Get the force field down, Shepard barked. She grabbed Caden and threw his arm over her shoulder. Kirahi hurried to hold Liara as Shepard reached for Vega with a free hand. Hold on, people, Shepard shouted and braced herself. The force field went down, though she barely felt it. There was the briefest surge, like a wave passing over her as the air around them was lost. Then she bent her knees, got a firm grip on Caden and Vega, and pushed off with all her force. She saw her fellows doing the same around her. She looked back at the platform. Malik stood there. She fumbled for her intercom. Malik, get out! I cannot, Commander. If you are to get clear of the station, I must hold back the Peacekeeper's intended destruction as long as possible. Shepard swore. No, Malik, I said not one more, and I meant not one more. You are getting out of there. Commander. Edie's voice joined the conversation. I believe I can be of assistance. When Malik feels he can no longer prevent the Peacekeeper's efforts, I will allow him to transfer his data into my own mainframe. It will be a bit crowded, but for the short term, I believe we will be all right until he finds another platform. If you would have told me that we would be willingly allowing a Geth to upload into my ship when all this started, I would have called up Brass and gotten you a Section 8 for insanity, Joker chimed in. Malik, can you do it? Shepard asked, watching as she drifted further and further from the Geth below her. Above her, Earth shone like a perfect jewel. I believe that I can. The Geth replied. Moments later, Shepard found herself being scooped carefully into the Normandy's open cargo hold. Joker was flying with a delicate precision she had never witnessed before. Gravity had been deactivated in the hold, so no one would be injured. Shepard anchored herself to a bulkhead and held her two charges in place as more of her crew were gathered up like insects into a jar. When they were all together, Joker activated the gravity slowly so their fall would not be so extreme, and the doors closed, cutting off Shepard's last view of the Citadel. Crewmen bustled forward to help with the injured, but she and her companions refused the aid. As she had done once before, Shepard hoisted Caden onto her shoulders in a fireman's carry. She strode beside Garrus, who still held Tali cradle lightly in his arms. She caught Garrus's bright eyes, looking at her, and she smiled. She spoke hoarsely through suddenly dry lips. My head is bloody, she said, but unbowed. <laughs>